Hello everyone, this is Phoenix. I was chosen by Allure Stories to read this story. It is fiction, but this is also a contest, so I was chosen to read this and place it on my channel in hopes that all of you will interact with it. So, by doing so, I'm appreciative. <laughs> but also as well, after you get done reading the story, in the comments below, if you will like it, Tell me what you like most about the story and share it. You'll be entered for a chance to win a $25 gift card. So there is a little something for you, even for the people who hate fiction. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now and we're going to get right on into. I am a life insurance agent. The client I denied wants revenge. From a lore storage written by Society Menace. The fluorescent lights buzzed overhead as I shuffled through the stack of applications on my desk. Another day, another pile of desperate people hoping to secure some fragment of security in an uncertain world. I've been working at Everlast Life Insurance for over a decade, and the faces all blurred together after a while. Young families, middle-aged divorcees, Elderly folks grasping at one last chance to leave something behind. I had seen it all. Or so I thought. It was late on a Friday afternoon when this file crossed my desk. Most of the co-workers had already left for the weekend, their vacant cubicles forming a maze of shadows in the dimming office. I should have been out of the door myself, but... Something made me pause as I reached for my coat. Maybe it was the worn edges of the manila folder or the faded photograph paperclip to the front. Whatever it was, I found myself sinking back into my chair, flipping open the file of one Mr. Ezekiel Thorne. The photo showed a withered old man, his skin like crumpled parchment stretched over sharp bones. But it was his eyes that gave me pause, pale blue and piercing. They seemed to stare right through the camera and into my soul. I shivered involuntarily and turned to the application itself. Ezekiel Thorne, age 92, no living relatives, former occupation, mortician, current address, 13 Ravens Lane. As I scanned his medical history, my eyebrows crept steadily higher. This man should have been dead ten times over. Heart attacks, cancer, strokes. He'd survived it all. And now, here he was, at the ripe old age of 92, applying for a substantial life insurance policy. All I met, a small part of me was impressed. The old codger had beaten the odds time and time again. But... The larger part, the part that had kept me employed at Everlast all these years, saw only dollar signs and risk. There was no way the company would approve this. The potential payout far outweighed any premiums he could reasonably charge. With a sigh, I reached for the large red denied stamp. It was just business after all, nothing personal. As the stamp came down with a dull thud, a chill ran down my spine. For a split second, I could have sworn I saw those pale blue eyes staring at me from the shadows of my cubicle. I whipped around, heart pounding, but there was nothing there. Just the empty office and the ever-present hum of the fluorescent lights. Get it together, I told myself. You're working too late. Time to go home. I hurriedly shoved Mr. Thorne's file into the outgoing mail and grabbed my coat. As I rushed out of the office, I couldn't shake the feeling that someone, or something, was watching me. The weight of that gaze seemed to follow me all the way to my car. That night, I dreamed of pale blue eyes and the smell of formaldehyde. The next week passed in a blur of routine. 
I processed applications, attended meetings, and did my best to forget about Ezekiel Thorne. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't shake the lingering unease that had taken root in the pit of my stomach. It was exactly one week later when I heard the news. I was in the break room, pouring my third cup of coffee, when I overheard two co-workers gossiping by the vending machine. Did you hear about that old man who died last night? The one who lived in that creepy house on Raven's Lane? I froze. Coffee mug halfway to my lips. Oh, yeah. What was his name? Thornton Thorn. Ezekiel Thorn, I whispered, my voice barely audible. My co-workers turned to me, startled. Yeah, that's it. Uh, how did you know? I couldn't answer. The room was spinning, the fluorescent light suddenly too bright. I mumbled some excuse and stumbled back to my cubicle, collapsing into my chair. It was just a coincidence, I told myself. Old people die all the time. It had nothing to do with me or the denied application. But as I sat there, trying to calm my racing heart, I couldn't help but remember those piercing blue eyes, and I could have sworn I caught a whiff of formaldehyde drifting through the recycled office air. That night, I tossed and turned, unable to sleep. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw Mr. Thorne's wrinkled face, his eyes accusing and full of malice. When I finally drifted off into the early hours of the morning, my dreams were haunted by the sound of a pen scratching endlessly across paper, filling out an application that would never be approved. I awoke with a start, drenched in sweat, as my eyes adjusted to the darkness. I realized with growing horror that the scratching sound hadn't stopped. It was coming from just outside my bedroom door. Trembling, I reached for the bedside lamp. As light flooded the room, the scratching abruptly ceased. I held my breath, straining to hear any movement in the hallway beyond. For a long moment, there was only silence. Then, slowly, deliberately, something slid under my door. A manila folder, its edges worn and familiar. With shaky hands, I pick it up and open it. Inside was a single sheet of paper. At the top, in spidery handwriting, were the words, Life Insurance Application. The rest of the page was blank save for two words stamped in red at the bottom. Claim denied. I let out a strangled cry and threw the folder across the room. This couldn't be happening. It was a bad dream, a, a hallucination brought on by stress and lack of sleep. I squeezed my eyes shut, willing myself to wake up. When I opened them again, when I opened them again, the folder was gone, but the faint smell of formaldehyde lingered in the air, and I knew with sickening certainty that this was only the beginning. The next morning, I called in sick to work. I couldn't face that office, couldn't bear to look at another life insurance application. I spent the day huddled in my apartment, jumping at every creek and shadow. By nightfall, I had almost convinced myself that it had all been in my imagination. Almost. As darkness fell, I found myself drawn to my computer. With trembling fingers, I typed Ezekiel Thorne into the search bar. What I found chilled me to the bone. The first result was an obituary, dated just two days ago. But... It wasn't the date that caught my attention. It was the photo. The man in the picture was undoubtedly Ezekiel Thorne, but he looked wrong. His skin was waxy, his posture too stiff, and his eyes, those pale blue eyes that had haunted my dreams, were open 
and staring directly at the camera. I slammed my laptop shut, my heart pounding. That couldn't be right. No funeral home would publish a photo like that, would they? A soft thud from the hallway made me jump. I froze, listening intently. Another thud, closer this time, then another. It sounded like footsteps, slow, dragging footsteps approaching my door. I held my breath, praying it was just a neighbor. The footsteps stopped right outside my apartment. For a long moment, there was only silence. Then came the knock. Three slow, deliberate raps that seemed to echo through my entire body. I didn't move. I didn't breathe. Maybe if I stayed perfectly still, whoever or whatever was out there would go away. Another knock louder this time, and then a voice, dry and raspy like dead leaves, skittering across pavement. I know you're in there, Mr. Insurance Man. We have unfinished business. I bit back a scream. This wasn't happening. It couldn't be happening. You denied my claim. The voice continued, seeping under the door like a noxious gas. But I'm not finished yet. Not by a long shot. The doorknob began to turn, metal scraping against metal. I watched in horror as it slowly rotated, defying the deadbolt that I knew was securely in place. Just as the door began to creak open, I snapped out of my paralysis and ran to my bedroom, slamming and locking the door behind me. I could hear shuffling footsteps in the living room, getting closer. You can't hide from death forever, the voice called out, now just outside my bedroom. Sooner or later, everyone's policy comes due. I backed away from the door, looking wildly around for an escape route. The window caught my eye. I was only on the third floor. I could make that jump if I had to. The bedroom doorknob began to turn. I didn't hesitate. I flung open the window and climbed out onto the narrow ledge. The cool night air hit me like a slap, clearing some of my panic from my mind. What was I doing? This was insane. I was three stories up clinging to the side of a building because I thought a dead man was trying to get into my apartment. I slowly turned back towards the window, ready to climb back inside and face whatever madness awaited me. But as I peered through the glass, my blood ran cold. Ezekiel Thorne stood in my bedroom. His pale blue eyes locked on mine. His skin was gray and mottled, his suit the same one he'd been buried in. As I watched in horror, he raised one withered hand and beckoned to me. I lost my balance, my foot slipping off the ledge. For one heart-stopping moment, I tethered on to the edge of oblivion. Then I was falling, the ground rushing up to meet me. I woke up at the hospital three days later. Multiple fractures, the doctor told me, but I was lucky to be alive. As I lay there, trying to piece together what had happened, a nurse came in with a small package. This was left for you at the front desk, she said, placing it on my bedside table. With a sense of dread, I opened the package. Inside was a life insurance policy from Everlast. My own company had apparently taken out a policy on me without my knowledge. And there, at the bottom of the page, with a familiar red stamp. Claim denied. I started to laugh, the sound bordering on hysterical. The nurse looked at me with concern, but I couldn't stop, because there, in the corner of the room, I could see a pair of 
pale blue eyes watching me from the shadows. <laughs> this was far from over. The next few weeks were a blur of hospital rooms and physical therapy. I told myself that what I'd experienced was just a livid hallucination brought on by stress and lack of sleep. The fall from my window? A moment of sleepwalking, nothing more. I almost believed it. But every night, as the hospital grew quiet and the shadows lengthened, I could feel those eyes on me. Sometimes I'd catch a glimpse of a withered figure at the end of the hallway, or hear the shuffle of feet outside my door. The night staff whispered about the smell of formaldehyde that seemed to linger in my room, no matter how much they cleaned. I was released from the hospital on a gray, drizzly Tuesday. As the taxi pulled up to my apartment building, I felt a surge of panic. I couldn't go back in there. I couldn't face those rooms when I'd seen him. Keep, keep driving, I told the cabbie, giving him the address of a cheap hotel on the outskirts of town. That night, as I lay in the lumpy metal bed, I finally allowed myself to think about what had happened. If Ezekiel Thorne was really dead, and I'd seen his obituary at night, then how could he be haunting me, and why? because I denied his life insurance application? It didn't make any sense. None of it made sense. A soft knock at the door made me jump. I held my breath, waiting. It came again, more insistent this time. Mr. Insurance Man. That dry, raspy voice called out. You can't run forever. Your policy is coming due. I bolted upright, my heart pounding. This couldn't be happening. Not here. Not again. The doorknob began to turn. I scrambled out of bed, looking frantically for an escape route. The bathroom window was small, but I was desperate enough to try squeezing through it. As I rushed toward the bathroom, the motel door creaked open behind me. The smell hit me first, a nauseating mixture of formaldehyde and decay. I slammed the bathroom door shut and locked it, my hands shaking so badly I could barely manage the simple task. The shuffling footsteps grew closer. Now, now, Ezekiel's voice rasped just outside the bathroom door. Is that any way to treat a client? We have a policy to discuss. I turned on the faucet full blast, hoping to drown out his words. But somehow, his voice cut through the rush of water, clear as a bell. You denied me in life, Mr. Insurance Man. But death? Death is a much more accommodating underwriter. The door now rattled. I backed away, pressing myself against the small window. It was stuck. Decades of paint, sealing it shut. I clawed at it desperately, fingernails breaking as I tried to force it open. A bony hand burst through the door, splintering wood as if it were paper. I screamed, a sound of pure terror that I barely recognized as my own. The hand groped around, finding the lock and turning it with a decisive click. As the door swung open, I finally managed to break the window seal. I didn't even bother to clear away the broken glass before I started to squeeze through the tiny opening. Shards sliced into my skin, but I barely felt the pain. All I could focus on was escape. I tumbled out onto the wet pavement of the motel's back alley, the rain soaking me instantly. I scrambled to my feet and ran, not daring to look back. I ran until my lungs burned and my legs threatened to give out, finally collapsing in a park several miles away. As I sat there gasping for breath and shivering in the cold rain, I tried to make sense of what was happening. 
This couldn't go on. I couldn't keep running forever. There had to be a way to end this, to appease the spirit of Ezekiel Thorne. What a sudden clarity. I knew what I had to do. The next morning, I dragged myself into the Everlast Life Insurance Office. My colleagues stared as I limped past, clothes torn and stained, face gaunt with exhaustion and fear. I ignored them all, making my way straight to the record room. It took me hours of searching, but I finally found what I was looking for. Ezekiel Thorne's original application. With shaking hands, I pulled out a pen and changed the denied stamp to approved. I filled out the necessary paperwork, backdating it before his death. As I signed the final form, I felt a chill run down my spine. Slowly, I turned around. Ezekiel Thorne stood there, a grotesque smile stretching his decayed features. Well done, Mr. Insurance Man, he wheezed. But I'm afraid it's too late for that. I blinked, and suddenly I was back in my apartment, sitting at my desk. The insurance papers were gone. In their place was a single document, my own death certificate, dated today. You see... Ezekiel's voice whispered in my ear. Your policy came due the moment you denied mine. Everything since then? Just a grace period. I felt a bony hand on my shoulder, and the world began to fade away. I woke up screaming, tangled in sweat-soaked sheets. My heart was racing, and for a moment, I couldn't remember where I was. As reality slowly seeped back in, I realized I was in my own bed in my own apartment. It had all been a nightmare. A vivid, terrifying nightmare, but a nightmare nonetheless. Relief washed over me, followed quickly by embarrassment. How could I have let a simple insurance application affect me so deeply? I glanced at the clock. 3.07 a.m. What a relief. I got up to get a glass of water, hoping it would calm my nerves. As I padded to the kitchen, a floorboard creaked behind me. I froze, a chill running down my spine. Slowly, I turned around. The hallway was empty, shadows stretching into the dim light. I let out a shaky laugh. Get a grip, I told myself. It was just a dream. I turned back towards the kitchen and found myself face to face with Ezekiel Thorne. His pale blue eyes bore into mine, his withered face inches from my own. The smell of formaldehyde was overwhelming. Sweet dreams, Mr. Insurance Man, he rasped, and then, with a bony finger, he reached out and tapped me on the forehead. I jolted awake, gasping for air. My bedroom was dark and quiet. No sign of any undead visitors. Just another nightmare. But as I reached up to wipe the sweat from my brow, my blood ran cold. There, in the center of my forehead, I felt a small cold spot exactly where Ezekiel's finger had touched me in my dream. I scrambled out of bed and rushed to the bathroom, flipping on the light. In the mirror, I saw a small, perfectly round bruise forming on my forehead. As I stared at it in horror, I could have sworn I saw pale blue eyes reflecting in the mirror behind me. I whirled around, but the bathroom was empty. When I looked back at the mirror, the eyes were gone, but the bruise remained. A tangible reminder that the line between nightmare and reality was blurring. From that night on, sleep became my enemy. Every time I closed my eyes, Ezekiel was there, waiting. 
Sometimes he chased me through endless, twisting corridors. Other times he simply stood and watched, those pale blue eyes never blinking. Always I woke with new bruises, scratches, or other inexplicable marks. During the day, I was a wreck. I couldn't focus at work, jumping at every sound and seeing Ezekiel's face in every shadow. My colleagues whispered behind my back, their concerned looks following me as I stumbled through the office like a ghost myself. I knew I was losing my grip on reality. But what could I do? Who would believe me if I told them I was being haunted by the ghost of a man whose life insurance application that I had denied? As weeks passed, I grew gaunt and hollow-eyed. The boundaries between waking and sleeping, reality and nightmare, became increasingly blurred. I would find myself in strange places with no memory of how I got there. Standing on the roof of my apartment building or in the middle of a graveyard across town. And always, I felt those pale blue eyes watching me. I knew I couldn't go on like this. Something had to give. In desperation, I decided to confront the source of my torment. I would go to Ezekiel Thorne's grave and... And... What? Apologize? Beg for forgiveness? I didn't know, but I had to do something. The cemetery was eerily quiet as I made my way through the rows of headstones. The sun was setting, casting long shadows across the ground. I shivered, pulling up my coat tighter around me. Finally, I found it. A simple granite headstone with the name Ezekiel Thorne carved into it. Below, the dates of his birth and death. And at the bottom, a single line. His claim was denied, but his spirit endures. I stood up, staring at those words as darkness fell around me. What was I doing here? What did I hope to accomplish? I'm sorry. I whispered, feeling foolish but desperate. I'm sorry I denied your application. I was just doing my job. Please, please leave me alone. The wind picked up, rustling the leaves of nearby trees. For a moment, I thought I heard a whisper on the breeze. Too late, Mr. Insurance Man. Far too late. I turned to leave, my heavy heart with the realization that this had all been for nothing. But as I took a step away from the grave, the ground beneath my feet suddenly gave way. I fell tumbling into darkness. The smell of damp earth filled my nostrils as I landed hard on something solid. As I lay there, winded and disoriented, I heard a sound that made my blood run cold. The scrape of wood on wood, like a coffin lid being slowly opened. A bony hand emerged from the darkness, gripping my ankle. As I was dragged deeper into the earth, the last thing I saw was a pair of pale blue eyes, gleaming with triumph. Welcome. Ezekiel's raspy voice echoed around me. To your eternal policy. Mr. Insurance Man, I'm afraid the premiums are quite steep, but don't worry. We have all eternity to settle the account. The darkness closed in, and I knew that my claim on life had finally been denied. I jolted awake, my heart pounding so hard I thought it might burst from my chest. The familiar surroundings of my bedroom slowly came into focus, bathed in the soft glow of early morning light. I was drenched in sweat. The sheets tangled around my legs like a burial shroud. For a moment, relief washed over me. It had all been a dream, a horrific, vivid nightmare, but a dream nonetheless. I let out an exhausted laugh 
running my hands through my hair. I stumbled out of bed, my legs weak and unsteady. The world seemed to tilt and swim around me as I made my way to the bathroom. I splashed cold water on my face, trying to shake off the lingering tendrils of the nightmare. But when I looked up into the mirror, my blood ran cold. There, reflected in the glass behind me, were a pair of pale blue eyes. I whirled around, my heart in my throat, but the bathroom was empty. When I turned back to the mirror, the eyes were gone once again. I called in sick to work that day, unable to face the thought of dealing with more insurance claims. Instead, I spent hours researching hauntings, exorcisms, anything that might help me understand what was happening. But the more I read, the more hopeless I felt. How could I fight something that shouldn't even exist? As night fell, I found myself dreading sleep. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw Ezekiel's withered face, those pale blue eyes boring into my soul. I tried everything to stay awake. Coffee, energy drinks, even slapping myself across the face. But eventually, exhaustion won out and I drifted off into an uneasy slumber. The dream started as it always did. I was back in the Everlast office, Ezekiel's file open on my desk. But this time, as I reached for the denied stamp, I hesitated. What if I had proved it? Would that end this nightmare? With a trembling hand, I picked up the approved stamp instead. As it came down on the paper, I felt a rush of relief. Maybe now it could be over. But as I looked up, Ezekiel was there, his decaying face inches from mine. Too late, Mr. Insurance Man, he rasped. Your policy has already been cashed in. I woke up screaming, thrashing against the sheets. As I fought to catch my breath, I realized something was different. The room smelled wrong, like formaldehyde and decay. Slowly, I turned my head towards the bedroom door. It was open, and standing in the hallway was a figure I had hoped never to see in the waking world. Ezekiel Thorne shuffled into the room, his movements stiff and unnatural. In the dim light, I could see the waxy sheen of his skin, the sunken hollows of his cheeks. But it was his eyes that held me paralyzed, those pale blue orbs now cloudy with death, but still piercing in their intensity. Did you really think it would be that easy? He wheezed, his voice like dry leaves scattering across pavement. That you could simply just stamp approved and you wash your hands of me here. I tried to speak, to plead, to reason with him, but no sound came out. My body wouldn't respond. Pinned to the bed by an unseen force, Ezekiel reached the side of the bed, looming over me. You denied me in life, Mr. Insurance Man. But death, death is a far more lenient underwriter. And now, it's time to collect on your policy. He reached out a bony hand, his finger pointing directly at my forehead. I squeezed my eyes shut, bracing for whatever was to come. But the touch never came. Instead, I heard a sound that didn't belong. The shrill ring of a telephone. My eyes snapped open. I was alone in my bedroom, sunlight streaming through the windows. The phone on my nightstand continued to ring insistently. With a shaking hand, I pick up. <laughs> Hello? Mr. Johnson? It was my boss's voice. Where are you? 
You were supposed to be here an hour ago for the meeting with the new clients. I glanced at the clock and cursed. I had overslept. I I'm sorry, I'll be right there, I stammered, already scrambling out of bed. As I rushed to get ready, my mind was reeling. Had it all been a dream? But the bruise on my forehead was still there, faded but visible. I made it to the office in record time, sliding into the conference room just as the meeting was starting. As I took my seat, trying to catch my breath, I froze. Sitting across the table, his pale blue eyes locked on mine, was Ezekiel Thorne. He looked different in the harsh fluorescent light of the office. Less corpse-like, more human. But there was no mistaking those eyes. Mr. Johnson, my boss said, I'd like you to meet our new client, Mr. Thorne. He's interested in a rather unique life insurance policy. Ezekiel's lips curled into a small smile. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Insurance Man, he said, his voice dry but devoid of the otherworldly rasp I had come to associate him with. I have a feeling we're going to be working very closely together. As he reached across the table to shake my hand, I saw the glint of triumph in those pale blue eyes, and I knew, with a sickening certainty, that this was only the beginning. The meeting passed in a blur. I nodded and smiled automatically, my mind racing as I tried to make sense of what was happening. How could Ezekiel be here, alive and well, when I had seen his obituary, when he had haunted my dreams and evaded my waking hours as a decaying corpse? As the other attendees filed out of the room, Ezekiel lingered. He approached me slowly. His movements fluid and natural, nothing like a stiff, shuffling gait of the creature that had haunted me. Quite a shock, isn't it, Mr. Johnson? He said softly, those pale blue eyes never leaving mine. To see the dead walk amongst the living? I swallowed hard, my mouth suddenly dry. I don't understand. I managed to croak out. You were... I saw. Ezekiel's smile widened, revealing teeth that were just a shade too white, too perfect. Death is not always as final as people believe, he said, especially for those of us who have certain connections. He leaned in closer, and I caught a whiff of that familiar formaldehyde scent. You denied my claim once, Mr. Insurance Man. But now, I'm offering you a policy of your own. One that will guarantee your safety and sanity. What? What do you want? I whispered, unable to look away from those hypnotic blue eyes. It's really simple, really, Ezekiel replied. You'll be my personal insurance agent from now on. Every policy I bring to you, you'll approve, no questions asked. In return, I'll ensure that your nights are peaceful and your days, well, let's just say you won't have to worry about any unexpected visits. I knew I should refuse. Every instinct screamed that this was wrong, dangerous. But the memory of those endless nightmares, the constant fear and paranoia, were too fresh. Do we have a deal, Mr. Insurance Man? Ezekiel extended his hand, his pale blue eyes gleaming with an otherworldly light. With a sense of finality, I reached out and shook his hand. His skin was cold and dry like old parchment. Excellent, Ezekiel said, his smile growing impossibly wide. I look forward to a long and profitable relationship. As he turned to leave, he paused at the door. Oh, and Mr. Johnson, 
Sweet dreams. That night, for the first time in weeks, I slept without nightmares. But as I drifted off, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had just signed away something far more valuable than any life insurance policy. And in the shadows of my room, I could have sworn I saw a pair of pale blue eyes watching, waiting, as I descended into a dreamless sleep. The weeks that followed were a blur of surreal normalcy. By day, I went through the motions at work, approving every policy that crossed my desk with Ezekiel's name attached. They were always for astronomical sums, always for clients with medical histories that should have disqualified them immediately. But I stamped each one approved without hesitation. The memory of those nightmarish weeks still fresh in my mind. By night, I slept peacefully, undisturbed by visions of decay and whispers of eternity. But the price of this tranquility weighed heavily on my conscience. As the months went on, I began to notice changes in my cell. My reflection in the mirror looked older, somehow. Gaunt. There were streaks of gray in my hair that hadn't been there before. It was as if Ezekiel was slowly draining the life from me, one approved policy at a time. It was nearly a year to the day since I'd made my deal when Ezekiel called me into his office. Yes, he had an office now, a corner suite with a view of the city. As I entered, I noticed the smell of formaldehyde was stronger than ever. Ah, Mr. Johnson, he said, those pale blue eyes gleaming. I have a special policy for you today. One I think you'll find particularly interesting. He slid a folder across the desk. With trembling hands, I opened it. Inside was a life insurance application. My life insurance application. As the meaning of his words sank in, I felt a chill run down my spine. This was it. The moment I'd been dreading all along. Ezekiel had never intended to let me go. He was going to claim me, just as he claimed all those other poor souls whose policies I'd approved. But in that moment of terror, something inside me snapped. I'd spent my whole career assessing risks, calculating odds, and suddenly I realized Ezekiel's power over me was built on fear. Fear that I'd given him willingly. No, I said, my voice stronger than I'd expected it. Ezekiel's smile faltered. I beg your pardon. I stood up, looking him directly in those pale blue eyes. I said no. This wasn't part of our deal, and I'm done being afraid of you. For a moment, Ezekiel's facade slipped revealing the decaying horror beneath, but I held my ground. You have no power over me, I continued, my confidence growing. You're nothing but a parasite feeding on fear and bureaucracy. Well, I'm cutting you off. I grabbed the file with my application and tore it in half. As the pieces fell to the floor, I felt a surge of energy coursing through me. Ezekiel let out an inhuman shriek, lunging across the desk at me, but his movements were slow, clumsy, as if he were struggling to maintain his form in our world. I dodged his grasping hands and ran for the door. As I threw it open, I shouted to the stunned office beyond, Everyone listen! Don't approve any more of his policies. He has no power if we don't give it to him. Chaos erupted in the office. Some people screamed, others looked confused, but I saw understanding dawn in a few faces. Those who, like me, had been haunted by nightmares of pale blue eyes and the smell of formaldehyde. As I ran through the building, shouting my warning, 
I heard Ezekiel's enraged howls behind me. But with each person who listened, each policy that was questioned instead of blindly approved, his voice grew fainter. I burst out of the building into the sunlight, gasping for breath. For a moment, I thought I saw Ezekiel's withered face in the reflection of a nearby window. Those pale blue eyes filled with impotent rage. But then, it was gone, fading like a bad dream in the morning light. In the days that followed, there was an investigation. Hundreds of fraudulent policies were uncovered, all traced back to the mysterious Ezekiel Thorne, who seemed to have vanished into thin air. The company underwent a major overhaul, with a new emphasis on ethical practices and thorough betting. As for me, I slept peacefully for the first time in what felt like years. The nightmares were gone, banishing along with the specter of Ezekiel Thorn. I'd learned my valuable lesson about the power of facing your fears and the importance of reading the fine print. Sometimes, on dark nights, I think I catch a whiff of formaldehyde or see a flash of pale blue eyes in the shadows. But I'm not afraid anymore. After all, I know the truth now. No ghost, no matter how malevolent or cunning, can stand against the power of human will and a properly denied insurance claim.